Hi folks, my name is Dr. Jared Williams. I'm your city council representative um, in District 6. And today we're gonna have a conversation about COVID-19. Uh, you know, we're currently seeing um, rise in COVID-19 cases um, all across the city, the county, and even the country. And so I wanted to take some time to have a conversation with my friend, uh, Brandon Bennett, who is the city of Fort Worth's health director. And so today we're gonna to be talking about COVID-19, where we are as a city, and then what you can do um, to help uh, do your part to make sure that we're um, keeping our neighbors and one another safe. Uh, so Brandon, can you give us, uh, you know, kind of a snapshot of yeah. um, where we are right now with COVID-19? Yeah, we're, we're in a bad spot. Actually, we're probably in, in a spot that is far worse than where we were back over the holidays where we had the last big wave. Mm -hmm. While we haven't reached the total number of infected, What's happening is the people that are becoming infected and are becoming seriously ill and hospitalized is running two to three times higher over a shorter period of time. And what that's done is it, it has filled up our hospitals. Uh, and, and even more importantly, it has filled up the pediatric hospitals that in a conversation with Cook's Children's and other children's hospitals, what we've learned is that they have had more children admitted to their hospital in the last three weeks than they have over the entire pandemic. Wow. And, and it's this Delta variant, which is, is more transmissible and tends to have a greater impact uh, on, on, on all of us, uh, vaccinated or not. Uh, and, and certainly those that are otherwise healthy. You know, we, we right. learned early on that if you're over 65 and you're unhealthy that you're at risk, well, even healthy people are at risk now with this variant. That's good. Can you describe uh, for the folks tuning in, um, who, are, who are we seeing being impacted and, um, you know, um, um, contracting COVID-19. Yeah. So consistently, if you're looking at you know you know from from a high level, and then I can make it real simple from there, it's it's the people that are that are impacted the most right now are 18 to 49. Uh, they're people that, that don't always have access to regular health care, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're people that uh, generally are, are working class, mo moving down to the, the poverty line, that, that those are the folks. And then, of course, there's those that have different ideologies, whether it be religious, political, and you don't have to meet all that criteria. Yeah, it's yeah. just that's what we see. Sure. Um, and at the end of the day, um, really, the, the people that, that, that we physically see in the hospital that are being uh, treated is... Uh, about 98% are unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, if you're vaccinated, you have a really good chance you're not going to be so sick that you're hospitalized. And then the even, the even uh, more compelling number is we're still at about 99.5% of the fatalities are unvaccinated people. Right. And, and that, that's why it's, it's just very important for people to get vaccinated. Right. But at the same time, we know that that the vaccines that we have don't protect you 100 percent right. and that's one of the reasons with this delta variant and the spread we have now that we are telling people that you should still wear a mask indoors right. and that you should socially separate and avoid large gatherings right and i know we're um you know right on the precipice and in the midst of back to school time yeah. um, and i know that you've met with the cook's children hospital can you um, you know uh, describe what the impact has been on children um, you know, of late. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yesterday afternoon, uh, we uh, got a briefing that um, all of the children's hospitals in the entire Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, their ICU beds were at capacity. And in fact, some of the hospitals up in Dallas were transporting uh, pediatric patients to Oklahoma for treatment because mm -hmm. they, they didn't have the staffing uh, or bed resource to take care of them here. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our nurses, have been at this right. uh, for over, you know, well over a year now, and and they're just wore out. Right. And so well, we're working with the state of Texas to bring in some supplemental nursing. But even at that, I think it's going to continue to be a challenge. That that the best thing we can do for ourselves, for our children, yeah. uh, is is get vaccinated, wear a mask, socially distance, and avoid large gatherings. That it, it it's everything that we had to do before, except. We're not having to do all the mitigation strategies now because people are vaccinated. So we're, we're not seeing a need to, to change occupancy levels or to close down restaurants and bars or, or things like that. We're really just that individual uh, protection uh, by wearing a mask and socially distancing. Right, and our, our, our medical uh, frontline workers have certainly been um, you know, really working hard at this. And I personally am grateful for the work that they do. I Absolutely. know it's not easy and they're working around the clock during this pandemic. 
And so it's, it's really good to know that, you know, we're thinking about staffing in our hospitals as well. Um, and, you know, I look forward to us being able to work with the state to really um, leverage resources to kind of get more help in our hospitals to really meet the, the need right now in this current spike. So um, that's good to hear. Um, you know, pivoting just a little bit, um, I just, you know, there's also things that you can do um, knowing where we are in the pandemic um, and knowing that, um, you know, we need you and the folks around you to be safe, to be healthy and to be well. And so some of the things um, that, you know, I'm personally encouraging you and the city of Fort Worth is encouraging you to do are one, wear your mask um, when you're out in public. Um, I think the second thing uh, we want to encourage you to do is, um, you know, cons consult your doctor and get vaccinated. Um, there are a lot of resources all across the state um, and all across the county and especially here in the city for free vaccinations. Um, and so we want you to be safe by getting vaccinated. Um, and then lastly, um, do your part in socially uh, um, separating um, and distancing from one another in public gatherings, um, at the restaurants, at the grocery store, just being mindful um, of your interactions with folks during this current rise. Um, Brandon, um, would you like to add some more context to things that no, folks at home can you, do? You are absolutely right yeah. that it's, it's you know, and it, it's about leadership. It's about self-leadership. It's about head of household leadership yeah. that, you know, if you if you go to a store and people aren't wearing their masks, don't go to that store, go to a different store, right? Yeah. Go, go to hours when there's not a lot of people there. I mean, we still have to buy groceries and things like that. That, that you, particularly if you have children, that you really got to think about your children first. And when we wear a mask or when they wear a mask, it provides us a little bit of protection. Actually, the wearing a mask actually protects other people from us. Yeah. If, if either you or I had COVID virus right now and we were, could actively spread it, you and I, because of our separation right now and because we're mm -hmm. both wearing a mask, are relatively safe. Right. Not foolproof, but relatively safe. But if you take your mask off and I leave my mask on and you have COVID, now I'm at risk even though I'm wearing a mask. And we need people to understand that, that right. it really, wearing a mask is thinking about others first, right? right? And yourself second, right? right? And, and it's not that much to ask that right. after everything else we've been through, a few more weeks of wearing a mask to get the rest of the population vaccinated. Right. Uh, and then we can get over this hump and get back to some sense of normalcy. Right, well, folks, y'all have heard it first here. Um, you know, we really are encouraging you that we are all in this together. Um, I firmly believe that neighbors help neighbors, um, and I certainly want all of us and all of you um, to help one another as we navigate through this uh, current spike in the COVID-19 um, infection rates. And, um, you know, I have hope and I have faith that together um, we will come out on the other side, um, you know, even more united uh, and uh, just more healthy um, than ever. And so please, please, please join us, join the city and the city's leaders um, in doing your part um, to keep um, your family, your loved ones, your neighborhood, your community and our city um, safe and healthy. Thank you all for joining us and tuning in.